Hello, welcome back to our Clinical Lab Learning Channel. Today, we will focus on chronic granulomatous disease. To our target audience, we will do our best in this presentation to answer several questions about chronic granulomatous disease or CGD. First of all, what is chronic granulomatous disease? And what role does phagocyte NADPH oxidase play in our immune system? What is a granuloma? Finally, what is the question about CGD like in the ACP study guide? Stay tuned for the Q&A to follow. There is one question in the ACP study guide that asks about this interesting topic stating for MLS only. Chronic granulomatous disease is actually a group of very rare genetic mutations that causes defective NADPH oxidase enzyme formation, leading to diminished superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, and hypochlorite formation needed for bacterial killing by our innate immune system phagocytes. This leads to a severe immune deficiency in children who suffer from frequent pyogenic and mycotic infections forming chronic granulomas. Sometimes the skin granulomas in a child presents with raised painful skin lesions with pinkish, reddish, or purplish hues with dark color-like discolorations around the skin bumps. For your information only, CGD is actually caused by several mutations in various locations of our chromosomes as shown in this table cited in Rodex hematology. There are X-linked and autosomal recessive genes that code for several protein products that assemble and form NADPH oxidase. Holding NADPH oxidase for now, this might be a good time to quickly review phagocytosis. The major professional phagocytes include neutrophils and macrophages, which mature from monocytes. Other phagocytes include B limbs, dendritic cells, mast cells, and eosinophils, according to our ACP study guide. Now, inside this phagocyte are tiny organelles called phagosomes, which engulfs and encapsulates the bacteria and combines with a lysosome, forming a phagolysosome. Embedded within the cellular membrane of the lysosome is one of the key enzymes needed for killing foreign microbes, which is called phagocytic NADPH oxidase. Inside this tiny phagolysosome is where the respiratory bursts occurs, where NADPH oxidase performs an oxidative reaction to pull a hydrogen from NADPH to form NADP+. Now, NADP+, adds an electron to oxygen. This chemical reaction is called reduction, forming a very reactive oxygen species called superoxide, which is an oxygen with an added electron. Sometimes we hear or loosely use the term free radicals to describe an atom or molecule with unpaired electrons that make them highly chemically reactive, causing oxidative damage to our cellular membrane, protein, DNA, and RNA molecules. Next, we have superoxide dismutase enzyme, and this enzyme is linked to NADPH oxidase because it converts superoxide into hydrogen peroxide by adding two hydrogen atoms. Finally, myeloperoxidase enzyme in azerophilic granules of neutrophils and to a lesser extent in monocytes and macrophages combine a chloride anion to hydrogen peroxide forming hypochlorite which is similar to bleach, and it is another microbe-killing chemical. Killing the microbe and releasing the remnants into the extracellular space by exocytosis. We are aware there is much more to our immune system in response to a foreign invader. 
This simplified version is from the perspective of phagocytic NADPH oxidase and CGD. What do you think is a net effect if there are mutations in any of these genes? Well, there will be defective protein products and defective NADPH oxidase enzyme. If you predicted that there will be less superoxide, hydrogen peroxide, hypochlorite to kill the microbes, especially those that are catalase positive, then you are right. Even if there were a partial production of hydrogen peroxide by superoxide dismutase, catalase positive bacteria evolved a defense to produce catalase enzymes to neutralize hydrogen peroxide from phagocytes to harmless water and oxygen. In CGD, we have an infection without bacterial killing. Neutrophils, the first responders, and then later the macrophages, try their best to phagocytize, but they are unable to kill the invading microbe. For our information, Granulomas form when immune cells encircle and encapsulate the living pathogens to stop them from spreading, forming a granuloma with central necrosis. We see an aggregation of macrophages and other immune cells in response to inflammation surrounding the central necrosis with living microbes, an attempt to isolate the microbes and prevent them from spreading. Macrophages, neutrophils, lymphocytes, plasma cells, histiocytes, giant cells aggregate, while fibroblasts and epithelioid macrophages try to encapsulate the periphery to seal off the living organisms, including the living microbes within. Common granulomas form around embedded foreign bodies, such as a wooden splinter, other particles, including sutures. You've probably heard about granulomas in tuberculosis, leprosy, histoplasmosis, cryptococcosis, sarcoidosis, and other diseases. Finally, granulomas are different from abscesses. The fibrous envelope is not as well developed as an abscess, plus the inner contents are not as completely fluid, sometimes resembling a cheesy texture known as caseous granuloma. And that's what we see in chronic granulomatous disease. And now for some Q&A that is similar to the ACP Border Certification Study Guide. Thank you for your time and attention and I hope to see you in the next video.